Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lace Up channel. My name is Mickey. Today I'm going to share with you all some extremely sad news. One of my mentors, the CEO, founder of Tortillas Inc. in Las Vegas, passed away a couple weeks ago. Today I wanted to take some time to reminisce all the good times, all the things that he taught me that have made me both a better entrepreneur and a better person. I want to take you through the five things that Gus Gutierrez taught me. Anyways, let's get right into it. Point number one, it takes a tremendous amount of time to have a successful business. So a lot of us young people, we take for granted the amount of time, the amount of work it takes to actually get one of these businesses to a point of profitability, let alone a point of extreme profitability where you may even become a millionaire or multimillionaire. In Gus's case, it took him 40 years. The first 10 years of the entire business were spent with Gus putting tortillas that he had manufactured all morning into the back of his car and him knocking on doors. The second set of 10 years were spent him driving back and forth to California to pick up flour tortillas and to pick up produce items so he could resell to his existing customers in Las Vegas. The third set of 10 years, there was finally some light at the end of the tunnel. Gus started making a profit. He had made enough to pay himself. But it was at this point that he realized to really scale the business, he had to hire people and put them at the right place in order to grow and take the next level. So in, in years 21 to 30, he grew from three people in the entire business all the way to 60. And then the fourth decade was really where it took off. He grew it from 60 employees to 130 employees, where Tortillas is now the premier wholesale distributor for Mexican food products all the way throughout Las Vegas. So 40 years it took Gus to grow this business. How long is it taking you? You know, most of us, we get so caught up in looking at all the different things happening on Instagram and Facebook and all social media, and we fail to realize that these things are propagandized posts pushed onto us in an effort to make money off of our attention. In reality, these things take time and you can't feel bad and you can't rush these things. Me personally, I've made some really poor business decisions under the impression that business happens fast, that success comes overnight. So let Gus's life serve as an example. It takes 40, 50, 60 years even to grow and scale your business to where you want it to be. The second and most fundamentally important point that I ever learned from Gus is that you have to be someone else's angel. You have to pay it forward. So back when he was getting off the ground, things were finally starting to go well. He started making masa, right? He was, he was supplying corn and flour tortillas. Things were really taking off. He had a retail location. He had a manufacturing plant. Long story short, one day he comes home, okay? And he goes to sleep and in the middle of the night, he receives a phone call. They tell him that his prized possession of his entire business, his retail location, had burnt to a crisp. This business was the one that was going to fund the growth of the rest of his business. It was going to fund the equipment he was going to utilize to really start producing at an industrial level. But the entire business burnt to the ground and the money that he was going to make from that business to pay back the debt on his equipment was now gone. So he calls. Mr. Trujillo. At the time, Mr. Trujillo was the founder of Guerrero Tortillas, which eventually got acquired by Mission. He calls Mr. Trujillo and he goes, Mr. Trujillo, you know that equipment you gave me? There's no way I'm going to be able to pay you back. I'm going to take it back to you. At this moment, it was like the heavens opened up and an angel came down and Mr. Trujillo was like, you know what, Gus? I know you're going to make it. I know you're going to succeed. I know you're going to take your business exactly where you want it to be. So why don't we do this? You pay me whenever and however you can. Could you imagine that? The retail location where all your income was coming from burnt to a crisp and somebody comes into your life and says, you know what? I got you. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. So this allowed Gus in reality to really grow the business because he was able to stop focusing on this retail location that was paying the bills and providing some profit and he was able to really grow the food service side of things. He was able to start cold calling again. He was able to go back to the fundamentals that made him so successful in the first place. And lo and behold, he made that business 10 times more profitable than the business that burnt down. Now, the amazing thing is that Gus learned from this experience and he became everyone else's angel. He even became mine. Back in 2015, actually it was 2014, December, my uncle had come to town, I had made an agreement with him that I was gonna start January 1st to, to grow the business and sell in English. 
but I knew nothing about the business. I knew nothing about distribution. So my uncle decided to take me out to the streets to cold call on some customers. So who do you think the first customer was? You know, Tortilla Zinc. We get there and we schedule a meeting with Alex, who was the general manager at the time. And Alex invited Gus and Gus and him both came to a meeting a couple days later where we sat down together and we brokered a deal to sell our software, which at the time, to be honest with you, was a complete piece of you know what. We brokered that deal. He signed up. Gus decided to give us a chance, even though we had no experience. He kicked out his vendor of 10 years to give us a chance. He paid forward what his person, Mr. Trujillo, had paid to him. And he gave us a chance. And trust me, it wasn't easy. It took us about a year to get him a system that he could actually benefit and profit from. And throughout the entire process, he was like, Mickey, I know there's always going to be problems with the system, but what I care about is that you're always here and I know that you're going to make it. So akin to how Mr. Trujillo told him he was going to make it, he told me that I was going to make it no matter the heartache. He made me believe that I would never lose him as a customer. He made me believe that he would never shop around and that made me exponentially more successful. Point number three, you have to make reading a component of your daily routine. So every week I'd go into tortillas just to talk to Gus, just to see how he was doing, and most importantly, to share book ideas. He had read these eight books on Audible, and he gave me all of them. He was like, here you go, Mickey. Read this, 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 this. And then I would tell him about the books that I read. I told him about the 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. I told him about Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardone. He told me about... Uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, believe it or not, even though it's one of the most popular books of all time, I had never read it it up until that point. He told me about Elon Musk's book. Basically, these meetings and sharing these ideas from these different books allowed me to change the way that I was thinking at the time. It allowed me to realize what was really possible. And it showed me the importance of reading every single day. So point number three, always incorporate reading into your daily routine. The fourth thing that I learned while being around Gus for a period of about four or five years was you have to care more about your people than your profits. Check this out. Gus would have food brought to his warehouse to feed all these people every single week. Not just that, but every time you spoke to Gus, he always asked you, how are you doing? How's the family? How's everything going? Prior to letting you know about an issue, a concern, or a problem that he had. It made you feel like you were priority over whatever was going on. Whereas most entrepreneurs, they go to the employee and they tear them down for the mistake that they made. They complain, they make them feel like they're not good enough. Whereas Gus always cared about the person first. He always put the person on the pedestal and then came the issues and then came the problems. For example, when we were getting started during those, you know, seven, seven months to a year of not having a system that was working at all, he was so patient. Every time we talk, I'd be like, Gus, how you doing? Um, he'd be like, Mickey, I'm doing great. How are you doing, buddy? How's life? How is the business? This was way before he told me, hey, the system's been crashed all night. My business has been down and I lost $10,000. Could you imagine? Somebody was actually so kind, so caring that he cared about me prior to worrying about the problems affecting the business. So what I want you all to do is really take this point to heart really realize that you have to put people, your employees, ahead of your profits. Point number five, in order to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to adapt, you have to do new things. So if we go, if we rewind the clock all the way to the beginning, the initiation of the Tortillas Inc. company, Gus would go make his own tortillas, grab those tortillas, stick them in the back of his Mustang, and hit all the stores door to door. And not just stores, he would actually go door to door for people to sell these tortillas. Eventually, One of the stores, one of the neighboring stores had had gotten so many requests from the people that lived in the neighborhood asking for Gus's tortillas that they finally called Gus. And this became Gus's first big customer. So he went from cold calling out of the back of his car to traveling back and forth to Cali, as I mentioned before, to pick up tortillas and to bring them back, to scaling out his business, having a retail location, having that burned down, to then going industrial and, and servicing food service in all the casinos in Vegas all the way to servicing all Mexican products, all Latino products to every single customer in all of Las Vegas. And all the way throughout, he was changing his approach. He was tweaking what he was doing. He would start delegating the tasks that were making less and less money or that were making less and less sense from an opportunity cost standpoint to employees. And he would turn his attention to whatever the most important task at hand was at that moment in time. 
Long story short, this allowed him to scale the business to over 130 employees. Now I know that's not the biggest business in the world, but think about that, particularly for those of you that have like 10 or 20 or 30 like I do, right? It takes so much work, so much effort, so much adaptation of the way that you process internally to be able to maneuver your way through the mud in order to scale your business, right? It takes so much focus and it takes such an, such an ability to understand what you're good at, what you're bad at, strengths and weaknesses in order to really focus your attention on something to, to take your business where you want to be to where you want to go. So you almost have to be a person that's willing to become a completely different person to get to a completely different level of success. And that's exactly what Gus did. He became a different person. He became the person necessary to get him to this level of success. And that's a good segue to the point that Gus was extremely successful, an entrepreneur, a person loved by many, a person that when you spoke to him, he touched you and you wanted to be friends with him. You wanted to come catch up with him every single week. If you take anything away from this story, please do your best to be as good of a person as you can. Do your best to leave a legacy. Do your best to take care of everyone around you first before taking care of yourself. And most importantly, do your best to take the five points that you learned in this video and apply them to your day-to-day -day life. I can tell you from firsthand experience, they've changed my life. Even though I was devastated by the passing of Gus, I am, am, am super pumped and excited to take these tenants and relay them to my next generation, let them know who Gus was and what he taught me. Anyways, I'm sorry that I deviated a little bit from our typical videos. But I wanted to share with you how much Gus meant to me and I wanted this video to, to live on forever. I wanted Gus to live in our hearts. I wanted my kids and my grandkids and my great grandkids to watch this video and know who Gus was. But anyways, apart from that, I really hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope you have a great day. Take care.